back. Real Steve TV. Yeah, guys, in the last three years, I've gone through a lot of changes, and um, I, I would say three years before this, like, so go back four years or later, if, if I would have been doing this then, I would be a different guy in a different stream, and I would be, like, more egotistical, more douchebaggy, more I'm number one, I'm so cool, I'm the best, because I lived <laughs> pretty much my whole life up until three years ago um thinking way more highly of myself than i am like struggling with arrogance and ego but this is the craziest part i didn't know that for all those years of my life i, I really didn't even see it or recognize it and then um i relapsed and, and drank for a year and a half and then I had to go to detox and get sober again. I'm almost three years sober, ladies and gentlemen. On March 7th, it'll actually be my three year sobriety birthday. No weed, no booze. And that's been, it's been a huge struggle in my life. And that's the first time that I was humbled, truly. God humbled me when I had to check into detox, guys. There is nothing like having to go to doctors you know what I mean? Think about this. When you go to detox, you're going because you need medical help because you're so bad, so bad of an alcoholic that quitting cold turkey could kill you. And I was at that point, man. I had drank for a year and a half, the worst I've ever drank in my life. And, and cold turkey was not an option anymore because I was so strung out on booze, you guys. And, um when you have to go to a doctor right so i go to detox and it's crazy bro i didn't even know what like how this detox place would work but um um you go to like their office i didn't know how this worked man and it was like kind of scary but you go to their office and because they want to cut you off from all of the outside stimuluses of your life and get you away from any possible way that you would drink for the time you're there. And I was there like five or six days, almost a full week. Dude, you check into the office and then, dude, they kidnap you almost. Then they take you in a car and take you to a safe house, which is like a regular house in a regular neighborhood. It's really weird, bro. It's like this house is between residential house. It's a normal house. And then when you, you go into the house, um, one of the rooms is set up as like um like a doctor's office kind of like with the computer and like medications and there's like always someone on staff like a medical person there in case god forbid something bad happens um you know if you have a seizure like that's common when you quit drinking that you could have a seizure but they're there the doctor and the nurses are there to administer meds to you to like bring you down so that you don't quit cold turkey um and then like you stay in a bedroom with like i was lucky the house held like i think like about 10 people so there was like a few bedrooms and then like the total number of people that could be in there was like eight or ten or something like four guys four girls and i was so like scared you know you're, you're coming off of drugs and alcohol and you're like i do not want to be around people and god blessed me dude i there was only one other guy for the whole time i was there and we became like brothers he was an older guy he was like 10 15 years older than me and uh he's in the same boat as me and we were both like dude i hope there's no other people coming and we lucked out because they were just slow that week and uh yeah it was really cool man well it wasn't really cool meeting my friend was cool like i love that guy and i always will but um yeah, every day they, they're weaning you off drugs. So the first night you go in, they give you a bunch of drugs, man. I'm not joking, guys. Like 20 pills of all sorts of different things, not just drugs, but vitamins and electrolytes and, and, and drugs, pain medication, everything. And then each day that goes by, they you, you get less and less pills, you know, until like the last few days, you're completely off everything. But like when I was in that detox house, God had to do that to me to humble me. And I prayed and I'm like, God, like, I don't ever want to come back here again. And it's the first time I realized like what an arrogant douchebag I had been for most of my life, like most of my adult life, bro. And I'm 
so sorry for that i'm so sorry for the people i hurt in all those years um and i'm so grateful that i survived and i can see it now and i don't ever want to be that guy again you've been watching real steve tv chromatic i had the same view of myself when i was younger i thought i was better than the top shelf bro it's a it's a very common sin ladies and gentlemen i believe pride is a sin i mean that's what it was it was it was pride and i don't think anyone should be be proudful um i think i only know this now because of what i've gone through the best way to operate is to be humble in all things it's to be humble man and this is one of the many reasons I believe in God and the Bible. If you study the Bible, the theme of pride and humbleness come up over and over again. And the, the, as the story goes, what's what got, what is the thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven, essentially, was pride. The Bible says he wanted to be like God and like usurp his throne, you know? And whether you believe that literally, which I do or not, even the metaphor of that is beautiful because it says like Satan was God's like, like the best of the angels, essentially, right? The angel that was in charge of the choir. And it said he's like, was the most beautiful of all angels. And he had the light or something. And, and that's why he's called Lucifer because Lucifer actually means like the bringer of light or something. So in his original state, like as an angel, he was actually originally good. And I just, that, again, if we're just taking it as a metaphor, like I totally can relate, man. And that sucks, dude. I don't ever want to go there again. Bro.